Alright, so the other day I was on Product Hunt and came across a really neat application called Umbo. And so basically what Umbo allows you to do is it allows you to host a GitHub based web, web application that if it's under 5, 12 megabytes you can actually do it for free. So all you do is you set up your GitHub repository, get all the files you know worked out, and then you go through their service and they actually host it for you. They use one of their little vanity domains, so it's kind of a win-win for everybody. You can host a small web application and they get their name out there because whenever it sends to your web application it's using you know umbo or whatever dot com dot umbo or whatever. So that's a really cool service and so I thought man I re I've really been wanting to experiment with with building some sort of you know deeper web applications in my spare time I've been working to learn uh, react a little bit more and trying to figure out you know what that looks like and so it's always that challenge between you know your hello world you know really simple type stuff on one side and then coming over and actually getting your stuff hosted and getting it live and working on the uh, on the on the live side and so I always have been looking for those little ways to challenge myself and experiment with actually getting stuff from from a code, you know, hosted locally to uh, something that's hosted actually online so you can actually see how it works and see the, you know, the challenges that are, are in that. If you've not used GitHub before, it's kind of simple to get started. There's a very sh steep learning curve. Um, it's used by individuals and organizations alike to uh, maintain just about anything from high school history courses to large applications to community run uh, technologies there's there's just really nothing you can't do with it and so there's a lot of really neat opportunities that you can find with it but basically what we're going to be looking at today is creating a very simple one file repository and then from that one file repository building out a simple one page quote unquote website if we can even call it that. The simplest way to create it is within a GitHub desktop. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to come in here, you're going to select create a new repository, it's going to give you some options to name it. And then from there what you can do is you can go into your text editor of choice. And so basically what I've done is I've created an index.html file, put it in our repository called shrimp place we're going to map out where the best shrimp places are because apparently we've got shrimp on the mind today. So now what we're going to do is we basically have taken a just a really really simple uh, bootstrap template um, like a jumbotron and like three containers with some little sample text. I can also link to where I found this. Um, it was just like super quick, grabbed it, um, ripped it, put it in here just so I can show you an example. And then what I can go over here and do is I can then pull this up and show you what this would look like just by itself. So basically what we have here is we have our three column layout, Jumbotron, all that kind of stuff. And that's exactly what we wanted. So now that we've got this laid out, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put the map inside the Jumbotron area. And that is going to be done using leaflets. All right, so right now we should have our GitHub repository kind of set up. It's obviously super simple, like we've said. Uh, I'll be honest, Git, I'm somewhat new to GitHub. I've used it in the past. I've used it with organizations, but I've never used it to host something you know, by itself and then have that deployed online. So this is a new, this is a challenge for me. So obviously I'm keeping it simple, I'm keeping it easy. I just want to get a working result. So now that we've got our single page ready to go, we can now move into the next part, which is setting up Leaflet. Now, for those of you not familiar with Leaflet, Leaflet is basically a JavaScript based mapping script that you can use. Um, it's got a lot of other things associated with it. When you call it, when you call the JavaScript file, which is a big one, you call it within your uh, HTML or whatever code you're writing in. Um, so you call it into your file and then you can utilize the services based on that. Um, you know, similar to something like maybe like a Google Maps that you that you have access to this tool, Leaflet's just another alternative to that. Uh, you can pull in base maps from other applications as well. I think we've used base maps from OpenStreetMap. We've used base maps from Mapbox as well. So there's a lot of flexibility with something like Leaflet. Uh, being that it is JavaScript, it's very easy to use, very easy to implement, and it's a really powerful tool. You know, it comes with your Zoom feature, comes with icons. These are your basic expectations when it comes to mapping to 
today. Um, it's got that stuff scaled for you know web usage, all that kind of stuff built right into Leaflet. So if you've never had a chance to mess with Leaflet, I would I would just challenge you to get get used to that and, and start playing with that. All right. So in order to include the Leaflet portion, which is going to be the actual map portion of this application, we're going to start over here in the header and add in two lines of code. First thing we want to do is we want to get our style sheet in here. That's a link to it. We're not writing it ourselves. It's not hosted on this application. Obviously, you could do that if you wanted. However, we're just using this as a proof of concept. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to, I'm pasting in from another document. I'm going to go ahead and paste in the leaflet JavaScript file. You can see here how I have it laid out. It's very elementary. There's not a whole lot to it. There's not a whole lot of nuance. It probably maybe even would be considered wrong doing it this way, but this is really just a proof of concept. It's something that when I had discovered the application on Product Hunt, I really wanted to see if I could get something working quickly and not so much nicely. So uh, talk is cheap, results are what's important. So we want some results. We wanna see what's going on. Okay, so what we've got here is we have the the variable for map and we have the ID that we're pulling and then we have set the location I went ahead and set it to the location of the San Antonio Texas Bubba Gump shrimp yes because that's what we're gonna do Bubba Gump shrimp so that basically is what's going to set up our initial map now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some more technical stuff when it comes to the actual layout of the map itself So here we're setting up two things with a lot of code. We're basically setting up the attribution to the map and then the maximum zoom and then the tile settings for the map. So if you're familiar with how web applications and specifically web maps work, they load in what is known as tiles of the base map. So you're not gonna generate the whole world at a 18 zoom because that would take way too long to load and pull too much data. So basically what it does is it gives you smaller images and as you zoom in and zoom out it adds or subtracts these images uh, basically to alleviate load on the server and to save you time. So it can get much more complex than that. I'll be honest, I'm not an expert, but there we go. That's basically what it is. Then what we have at the last part, we're going to add a just a simple marker to our location there in San Antonio, which is the exact same GPS coordinates up here. We're gonna give it a marker, exact same, exact same. So we'll go ahead and save this, and then we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get it to run. So we're gonna save this, and then see if we can get it to run. So if you can see here, it appears we've done everything correctly. We have our bootstrap layout. We have our map up here in the Jumbotron. We are centered up here on the San Antonio Bubba Gump shrimp. And if you want, we wanted to zoom in, we could do that more. But if we want to add other shrimp locations in the San Antonio area, we might want to zoom out. But again, settings we can all adjust. Here is our attribution here at the bottom always important and then if you wanted to add some more info here you could do that so now basically this is this is an HTML file right this is super like basic HTML but it's not online anywhere and what we want to do is we want to take this code in this github repository and turn that HTML file into something that's live that someone can visit and actually see so the way that that's done is you're going to go back over here to our GitHub desktop application. And we're gonna go ahead and see that we've, it's marked out all the places where we've done edits to our original HTML file. So when we had originally had the bootstrap file, it was like this simple layout. It's now showing us all the edits that we've made. And then, then we're gonna commit these to master and then we're gonna publish them. Which we should be able to do now is we should be able to go to GitHub on our desktop. This is the online repository. Let's take a look at our index.html uh, file. 
it all seems to be in working order here. We know that the file worked on our desktop, so we know that the code is at least somewhat solid for our purpose and right now. The next thing we're going to do is we're then going to go and create an application within uh, Umbo. And so the last part that we've covered is deploying our web application web application on Umbo. Umbo is a really cool service, I think, uh, for getting you past that hump that can sometimes be local deployment and then active deployment. Um, you're getting to figure out how to use use GitHub to maintain uh, version control and, sh and all the challenges associated with GitHub. Uh, you're using Leaflet, which is another tool that most people who are in the GIS or mapping field or even in the JavaScript field should have some familiarity with. And then finally, we're getting used to getting that web application going by itself. And, and really, the, the, the cool thing I like about Umbo, and this is why I decided to make a whole video on it, is the fact that it starts you off free, gives you that opportunity to learn, and then once you've said, man, I can really do a lot more with this web application, you start growing. As you're growing, you are then able to add on more to it without having to, you know, fit the bill at the beginning. When you're still learning, you're going to encounter mistakes, you're going to encounter problems. It really helps to remove that burden of not trying because of, you know, financial restrictions. So create a new app. You can give it a name. You've seen up here. It's called Shrimp Place. The deployment type we are selecting the 512 megabyte up to 100 lines of logs, um, and that's free. Obviously, you can see, you know interesting cost if your your application is over you know kind of eight gigabytes maybe freeware isn't much exactly what you're looking for and now we're going to go ahead and we've pointed to our github repository right here we've called it uh, shrimp place you know we've got our other ones we've got the one the test one that i'm working on some other fun ones in this account um, and this is a private repository you can also do this with a public repository as well so if you wanted to have some fun with that. You can then select a build type. If you're much more experienced than I am, and you have experience with applications, obviously you're gonna be wanting to do things maybe with Node or maybe with Ruby. If you're working with you know other different types of stuff, this is really, really helpful and super, super useful. I, however, for the purpose of this example, am not. We're doing a static build, which is basically just file system stuff. Um, if you had, you know, readmes, if you had a ton of stuff built in there and you had a specific source folder, you could add it in here. Um, you can also set passwords, um, security passes, all that kind of fun stuff. You can then point to a domain if you want in here, and then you can finally deploy it. Now, if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to deploy this very simple web application right now. So let's see it build, and now it says deploy. Let's, we can then see the web application that we've built. We've got the map, we've got our pinpoint here, and we've got our columns here just for fun. Uh, we can probably add some more info to this, maybe customize this little icon. Here. So it's very inexpensive to continue going with it. If you, if you continue to build out your web application and you're adding and you run out of space, you know, $5 a month gets you going, I think for like a gigabyte or something like that. So really easy to, to get started with and to, and to start building things. And I think that's what I wanted to encourage you to do as well as I is get out there and build something, you know, find a problem, make a little tool, find a solution, and who knows, you might come up with a really, really useful tool that people out there are looking for as well. So just like a quick update, I know we've covered a lot of Google Earth Engine stuff in the past, and that's been sort of the bulk of where a lot of people have come and have you know looked for videos and have found me and my channel. Um, I've not been very active on it. You know, life happens. You graduate, things get in the way. You start to work. You know, YouTube becomes something that you really can't continue to do um, as frequently as you've done before. I know there's a ton of questions that I've not gotten to quite yet, um, and I don't really anticipate that maybe I'll ever get to them. Uh, so if you you still do have questions you know feel free to uh, continue to ask them and even email me that's probably how I'm going to be able to answer them best but I'll be completely honest Google Earth Engine it's a really great tool. The only problem is that it's in Google's ecosystem. And so I, I was talking to some professionals in the field and they were saying, you know, Earth Engine, really cool, really great something to know and to use. 
but at the end of the day, it's really not making Google any money that we can see. Obviously, they might be using it for other purposes, you know, renting their server space out to people like that, sure. But that's a very small percentage of the population that's actually going to be able to make Google money with a service like Earth Engine that really is incredible. And we've all seen how incredible that technology is. So a word of caution, if you're getting into Earth Engine and you say, man, I really want to learn some more about this, I really want to dig into more of it, be cautious because we could go the way of say like a Google Plus or any of the other Google services that have been around and then have been you know shut down kind of immediately and then there went all your time and your effort and your scripts and everything that you've learned down the drain because we only learned one thing. So my word to you would be to diversify. Uh, learn, you know, other forms of implementing code, whether it be Python, whether it be JavaScript. Um, learn some more broad things that you can apply, you know, learn how to apply leaflet, things like that. Um, there are a lot of services out there that can do these things similar to Earth Engine. It just takes a little bit more work around and sometimes there's maybe a cost associated with it and you're going to be calling APIs and things like that. So that, those are like the, you know, the soft skills that are a lot more valuable than simply learning one sort of really simple to use web application. And we all love Earth Engine. I mean, come on, there's a reason why we've all watched the videos and why I've made videos about it. It's because it's a really great service and a really awesome tool, but don't limit yourself with just that. So challenge yourself, get out there, build something new, and you know, hopefully I'll be able to make more videos now that I've kind of gotten a little bit more of a regular schedule. I'm hoping to uh, kind of expand my knowledge, uh, get more into like web development and scripts and things like that. Uh, things that are more valuable to you on an everyday basis and not being so limited within GIS. That being said, if you have any topics, suggestions, questions that you want to ask me about Earth Engine or other topics, uh, let's discuss them. Put them down in the comments and I would love to be able to answer them. If you've got a field that you're getting into or things that you're curious about, I am I am by nature a person who likes to read articles. If you've got articles that you've written, if you've got things that you've done with Earth Engine, if you've got research that you want to talk about, I'd be more than happy to do that with you. I think that one of the best parts since I started creating those videos and since the today. One of the coolest things is the ability to be able to communicate with other people about GIS topics. Uh, I was reading about, you know, the other day just some comments on a on a Reddit thread about, uh, you know, the biggest GIS mistakes that you've ever made and just being able to see that community but where when I started that really didn't exist and now there are much more people um, who are able to be out there and be out in the community and who are able to experience, you know, GIS and what that looks like uh, here in the world today. So again, let's connect. Uh, you got questions, put them down in the comments. Let's see what we can do. Thanks.